Now, folks, it is called cow pens because it literally was a cow pen. It was open to rain. Also, by this time, because of, again, the com commotions, militia had been flocking to Morgan and to Green, but particularly to Morgan. Morgan chose it because if the word went out, go to the cow pens and meet up with Morgan, people knew where Hannah's cow pens were. Um, and the Battle of Cow Pens, I'm pleased to say, is still being studied at the United States Military Academy in terms of military <clears throat> tactics. Daniel Morgan knew his men, he knew his enemy, and he knew the terrain, and he knew the strengths and weaknesses of particularly his men and the enemy. He ordered the militia to fire twice and retreat, hoping that the British would follow, thinking that that was again going to be an easy, an easy route. Uh, and he knew that because Tarleton was so impetuous. He, again, looking at the mind of his, his foe. This is the only pitched battle, as I'm sure you know, in the American Revolution where British troops ran from an American army. Tarleton and his feared British Legion were totally defeated, and it was, noted historian John Selby, one of the most brilliant victories of the war. Before Cowpens, and before Tarleton lost a thousand effectives at Cowpens, Cornwallis's army was between 3,500 and 4,000. So 25% of that army is now gone after Cowpens. And in addition, Tarleton did escape by the skin of his teeth, but he destroyed all of his military supplies and materiel to keep them from falling into rebel hands. The significance is, once again, success brought out fighters for the American cause, and it sent a message to the Tories, you better still continue to lay low. And I mentioned that intelligence was bad before Kings Mountain, after Kings Mountain and Cowpens, for the British it was non-existent. And that explains in many ways how once Morgan joins up with Green and they make that race to the Dan, they're always one step ahead of Cornwallis.